actual talk is announced. Um, this will be like uh, kind of 20 years. It's a bit longer, but we had uh, some not so much happening uh, Euro BSD con conferences, so it's more or less a 20 years uh, talk and some details about foundation. And I start with the summary, so after that you can doze off. It's a trivia talk of just some easy statistics. So if you are still in hangover mode, but do not snore, please. <laughs> no, no, it's, it can, went to sleep and it wants your fingerprint, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Talking too much without... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the one credential. Okay, I started with that already. So I start with the summary. As I said, uh, it's 20 years, uh, more or less. In total, we had uh, 18 conferences um, uh, spawning uh, a total of 15 countries so far. So in the early days, we had some uh, rerun of, of countries. And in total, we estimate, because we do not have uh, real numbers, uh, but it should be about 3,000 attendees in total over those uh, 20 years. And what I have been able to do is uh, count uh, actual talks and tutorials and an amazing 577 talks and 105 tutorials given. Um, most of them are unique, uh, besides uh, tutorials which are uh, recurring uh, more or less every year, like, uh, I've seen Kirk somewhere. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, I didn't count it per se, but it was like really, really, really often, and it's always um, very popular. Uh, a lot of bookings going into that, and of course, people's uh, OpenBCPF uh, tutorial is, is booked very often. So we start with the beginnings. That's what we do. Um, so the first uh, BSDCon Europe was the name by then, was found by these lovely people I have never met. <laughs> At least uh, I think so. I couldn't get the real numbers about attendees, but from the looking at the pictures about maybe 100 and not that many talks and tutorials back then. And this was in Brighton, UK. So I was always adding the country flag and the flag uh, of the location, uh, city, or area, whatever there is. Uh, and I'm, I have collected all the mascots uh, been being used uh, over time. And uh, moving on to the next year, oh no, so sticking with uh, pictures from back then, uh, I mean, it's over 20 years, so the pixels have been way smaller. You do not have like 4K pictures in 2001. <laughs> but I wanted to point out like these very nice uh, podiums and a good old uh, uh, projector presentation probably running on 800 to 600 <laughs> pixels. And what we are not having nowadays, but I think we will bring it back, is something like, a, it was called terminal room, but just like an open hacking space or so. But it's distracting people from going to talks and, talks and tutorials, so we have to decide about that. But as you can see, uh, it's a bit too dark on here. Uh, like already some Apple stuff in there. <coughs> So next one was 2002 in the Netherlands, in Amsterdam. Um, I started my uh, BSDCon Europe journey there together with Henning. We had a talk about tuning PF. This was already a blast with uh, over 250 attendees. Uh, just a little bit more talks. And back then, um, the talks were also um, sent in early, so there could be uh, a, decision, a decision from the program committee about what was the best paper, because there wasn't really a paper submission. We didn't do that in later years for, well, creating more deadlines and whatever, just leave people alone with, with their uh, actual topic and presentation of that. 
And this flag is really from Amsterdam. It's not like something made up. <laughs> Always amazed about this one. I think it's alcohol related. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Never. So uh, back then, the, there was the official mascot like the, in the first year, but here there was also an artwork uh, competition, and this was uh, titled uh, Power Meets Beauty. There are some other versions of that I'm not showing here. <laughs> if, if you remember it, maybe. It had less white. So uh, the best reward, uh, best paper reward was these uh, wooden clocks. I think they are called clocks. Yeah, yeah. yeah clocks. Um, with beastie on it, so that was pretty nice, but maybe a bit noisy for uh, boarding the flight. <laughs> and this is Paul, Paul Henning. And uh, it was proven that night that having a beer license on your code can be a bad idea. Because everybody took the chance, like, oh, you wrote this nice piece of malloc code, and you said, uh, if we ever meet you, here's your free beer. I mean, the beer was free anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but so pe people are running around with uh, 10 beers, and Paul Henning was, I think, <laughs> wasted. <laughs> yeah, this, this is on a, on a, on a ferry boat, so. Yeah, but, but anyway, the, the joke was done. <laughs> and uh, back then we had a lot of uh, merchandise um, from mainly OpenBSD by Wim. That's not done any longer for personal reasons and others, but it was, a for many years this was a, uh, a common thing to see. So in 2003, the conference disappeared maybe to the moon, whatever. <laughs> but I found out that uh, there was actually a decision in 2002 uh, that oh, having a conference every year, that's way too much effort, so skip it. Maybe there was something on the moon, but I cannot disclose this. <coughs> so in 2004 in Germany, in Karlsruhe, uh, there was, uh, it was renamed, I don't know if this was really an active decision or it just happened by shortening stuff. And since then we are running as EuroBSD Con. Uh, I didn't find information about tutorials, but I cannot believe really that there have been none. And also there was a, a conference poster and I was not, I found people, sorry? Yeah, I was, I was finding information that it was there, but I did not find a picture of it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, cool. Very nice. <coughs> Next on uh, Switzerland. Uh, Again, very good uh, attendees uh, number, and uh, there was also some information about how many countries involved, and it was already at 27, it's pretty amazing, but not much else from the archive. So we have archived most of the websites, uh, but not all of them, and digging through web archive work can be a bit of a pain uh, uh, too, especially if um, there are broken PHP setups. How could that happen? Um, <laughs> we know this guy <laughs> over there, still some hair, maybe a fake, <laughs> but I brought it up uh, for, the, for the other person, but for um, yeah, privacy reasons, I was using this picture. There's another one with his face, just in re remembrance of uh, Mixkey or Michael Shalev who uh, passed away several years ago. Always a super nice person to be with. And this is uh, again show, showing Paul Henning, but I choose this pic pic picture because this was in Switzerland at the university and look at this podium. They have everything, wood and uh, cloth and whatever in nice uh, BSD red. That's pretty cool. But I don't think it was made for the conference exactly. 
So in Italy, <coughs> 2006, uh, like I said, uh, it was the start, first time uh, Peter was giving uh, the PF tutorial and also very nice to attract more people. Uh, it was the first time where there have been uh, a spouses program or track. So for the touristy part of the conference, uh, there was some organizing about that. We didn't do that uh, every year, but uh, it should be done, and we are having that on the on the list to to make that happen uh, every time. And just a side note, so it was the first time south of the Alps, like Europe, is a bit bigger than Germany, France, and all that. Um, going on to the next year in Denmark. Um, couldn't find that much information. I was requesting it, and there's still this XXX for that in there. Sorry. Uh, and uh, I think uh, from what I have been gathering over the programs, uh, I think, Kurt, this was your first time, 2005. Is that correct? Yeah, okay. Very nice. So it's like uh, too many years, and he's doing it almost every year. So please have a little applause for Kirk being so persistent. <laughs> uh, for 2008, I was researching a bit about pictures and uh, the website said from the archive, all the attendees, please upload your pa uh, pictures to Flickr. So the very young of you might be asking yourself, what's Flickr? <laughs> Uh, yeah, but it's empty. <laughs> <laughs> the trash can has been emptied. <laughs> and uh, it should be about uh, the first conference where a uh, parallel track was uh, to get uh, BSD uh, A or C certification. I'm not really sure about uh, some is some are reference it will be BSD A and some C A and whatever, but. Uh, this was more or less the first time we did that, and we should bring back that more often, but it's a bit difficult to get uh, certific uh, certificates uh, people over there, and then, yeah, it's difficult. Like all the time with certificates, it's always a bit a mess. Uh, 2009 is one of those, uh, we have, uh, a rerun for, for the same country as before, but um, this happens if you have just nobody else showing up um, to, make a, to make a conference from, from all of their own, only having more or less the name and some basic outline. Um, at least it was in a different city and location. And the mascot did change there. Um, like France had only this uh, textual logo, and here we are coming back with BC, and I think this should be like presenting something about ruddering. You are one of the, no, UK guys. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Cambridge and the other unspoken city contesting that they were. <laughs> um, So the, the next rerun was just the next year of Germany again in, in the same uh, venue and all that. But since it was a, a successful uh, conference at the, the previous time done by Patrick, I think. Yeah? <laughs> Good. So um, that one had a, a new mascot as well, and I think from here on, uh, every year we have a new new mascot per uh, per conference. Uh, but the number of talks and tutorials are a bit like uh, always on the same level. So we should have uh, more uh, more attractiveness uh, to the conference in in following years, um, and. I don't know if this uh, nice buffet uh, was uh, just like, it should be outside of here, it was it part of the social event, it wasn't mentioned. Do you recall that? Oh 
All right. Yeah. And interestingly to me, it's like uh, in the, in the um, presenting rooms, so you cannot, almost no laptops around. So I do not know if that was a policy or so, but usually if there are tables, people are always hacking along uh, instead of listening to what's happening in front of them, <laughs> like in school. So <coughs> also again, uh, country-wise, uh, but also uh, uh, with a new location in a different city, more or less. Um, this year, in this year, it was like uh, becoming apparent that um, a new group doing a new conference uh, every year in a different uh, country and location is maybe too much of a burden and it changes too much and there is maybe not enough trust. So the, the idea about uh, a framing body or in what it went to was a foundation. Uh, was the idea was coming up and was formed later, later in the year and I'm coming to some details for the foundation uh, after we are going through all the countries. And uh, since that happened, uh, the first conference in Poland uh, was already done with the help of the foundation. Um, still average number of talks and since all this part like um, every uh, conference organizer has to make the same mistakes because he because they do not have the experience from previous conferences so then from BSD Ken uh, Dan Langill was uh, jumping in like uh, okay I will present what I'm doing every year so he has the experience and was trying to share it with the people but so the same problem was tackled from from two sides and the social event I've seen some pictures about it and I'm not showing them here. <laughs> For, I mean, it's not about legal age problems, but anyway, maybe a different time than 2012. Uh, the social event had some kinky parts in Warsaw, so, okay. <laughs> Don't know if we rerun something like that. And so the, the next uh, location in 2013, was obviously something more attractive for, I don't know which reasons, maybe something with sunshine and beaches and whatever. Um, suddenly the talks are almost doubled. So I didn't do the scheduling, but uh, I think it was like, uh, if you have a template for 20, 24 talks and then you have submissions till no end and you do not want to send people back home and they will never come again. So <coughs> that's qu quite a thing. Also with the tutorials, like usually it was four or six and now you have 11. So there was a, a lot to see. I didn't find a number about how many attendees went there, uh, but I guess it was a blast. 250 around that and uh, just like a reminder this is uh, 10 years ago we have been already talking about the year 2038 maybe a little reminder to bring your projects up for this um, <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about look it up it will be an interesting year very interesting one worse than year to pay <laughs> no, winter is going out. <laughs> okay. All right. Obviously. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. 
So uh, he was talking about uh, it was planned to go to Switzerland again in 2013, but uh, just for the reason I was already saying, like, um, do not rerun the country, and then over private connections it was moved to Malta. And yes, it was very attractive because as a speaker you get free travel, and maybe you are not going that often to Malta over Switzerland. I <laughs> yeah, okay, so the, the talk was done by Fio de Rat because at that time we have been fixing uh, this problem in OpenBC more or less. And he was saying that there was, and there was a follow up uh, private talk in the hallway. That's right. For all the listeners on the stream, come to the conferences if you can. Only the streams are maybe 50% of, of the information and the contacts you can gather. Stuff like uh, this additional hallway discussions, it was mentioned between uh, Fio de Rat and Paul Henning, if I understood that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, between Fio and Paul, Paul Henning. So there's always more um, things to gather if you are here in person. And that's not only Vino Tinsko. Um, so going on, 2014 in Bulgaria, uh, several first things again, like uh, presenting a raffle. I didn't find the details about how to, to get or win it. So some, someone, Jana, do you remember details about it? Okay. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it was only like, oh, we have a nice raffle, some, some kinky device, whatever. Uh, it should have been probably the first FreeBC Dev Summit running in parallel to the tutorials. And we introduced Groff. If you do not know this uh, very cute little uh, <laughs> Go. It's up there at the registration as medium. It is, it is passed between several keepers and it He's traveling the world more than we all together, more or less. That's really crazy. And this is now uh, reaching year 10, so I'm really surprised this goat holds to still together. It has its own Twitter account um, praising his travels or its travels. I'm not sure. Is it? The first keeper was a German. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, but. Uh, but it was bought, born. <laughs> and raised by Benedict, so yeah. it's German-Canadian, let's put it this way. <laughs> <laughs> and it, sh it was mentioning, I, I saw, um, going through all the websites of all the years, so it's the first time mentioning that there's a live stream, so it's probably the latest point in time that uh, we started the live stream, the event as well in Sofia. So that's very nice, and um, the, the mascots are getting now a bit more more advanced. I'm going back for that. I think Paul, yeah. Netherlands, it was still pretty basic, but now we are going to have like more local influence, uh, probably local artists um, doing it nowadays mostly. So Malta has this uh, nice, uh, I think Templars, should that be? or related to them, that it's the Maltese cross, but from what I remember, it, there should be some temple, Templar thingies in this as well. And Bulgaria has this, uh, I think, Dracula reference, I guess, with the bat. Oh, okay, nice. Um, 
coming to 2015 in Stockholm, uh, I had a hiatus from the conference for a while because not really having any uh, uh, concrete BSD uh, relationship for some years. And uh, also the certification uh, is back for, does he speak Croatian? Okay. Not certified typing. <laughs> And uh, again, a pretty interesting part of uh, how to do uh, a mascot. Mutant heroes or something. <laughs> it's really like the arms morphing into more species. It's forking, I guess. Ah, okay. <laughs> Today I learned a lot. Right. Uh, so going to Serbia, uh, I was in, in, in 2015, it was like, oh, you are back, you have to make a talk. Better you make a tutorial. No way you make both. Did so. And that, that's a recommendation I can only do is uh, bring your own laptop if you book a tutorial. It's pretty pointless to have a workshop and you come up there with empty hands and then like, oh, I'm not getting anything provided. Oh, that's okay, but I will just learn from the slides. If the, the slides are like four slides for four hours, you will not learn that much. <coughs> so 2017 was in uh, Paris and the Attendee, attendees number shot up. I don't know, Paris is very expensive, especially for fashion and all this stuff, food and whatever. Probably the only cheap stuff is baguettes, but that's because of subsidies. <laughs> but somehow this location was very, very attractive. So many, many, many people are coming for Let's say insane prices, especially uh, around hotels. I, I was like happy, like, oh, five days for 500 euros or 400, no, yeah, five days, 400 euros. Until I, I realized it was 400 euros a night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So at checkout, like, wait, wait, what, wait a minute. <laughs> Thank you very much. But it was just across the street, so at least that. Um, 2018, I've not been able to find that much, but you see that even people are coming from more countries, probably countries surrounding Romania, uh, but a, a low attendees number. So we will still try to, to go to such places, even if they are not so attractive for maybe spouses and whatever uh, because you see the, the numbers is we are about 60 percent something but way more um, diversity on the on the country distribution uh, part of things so we will continue to do that and not only going to the well let's say high roller cities Um, then we have been in Lillehammer, <laughs> which was a bit of a remote place. <laughs> and if we are, <laughs> and it was expensive for all those into booze. <laughs> Just to give you an idea, back then, so pre inflation, <laughs> it was 10, 11, 12 euros uh, a pint of beer. And this was average price, not the uh, overpriced hotel bars or something like that, or nightclubs. No nightclubs in Lillehammer is what I know. On the other hand, you get very steep hills and they are still, back in for the Olympics, did still think it was necessary to build a ramp for, I don't know. They could have done the, the ramp jumping throughout the, the little city of Lillehammer. It was steep enough, <laughs> for sure. Uh, a lot of talks anyway, uh, really interesting. 37 was very good. 
and we had a blast of a time over there in isolation, more or less. Um, coming to 2020, well, we all know what happened. Um, so, um, with the situation, uh, there, there was some forth and back, and we, we gathered that uh, probably the talks will be really the same for if they are held only online uh, for both conferences. So, we d did more or less an agreement, I'm jumping, um, that we have an online conference in 2020 and 21, but the head of organizing more or less uh, was uh, BSD CAN in 2020. And in 2021, it was the, um, the Vienna team because the uh, planned location for 2020 was Vienna already. And so, um, a record number of attendees, so well, that's easy if no, nobody has to travel, it's a bit more easy to register for a live stream. Uh, still 25 talks, that was pretty good. And there was no uh, downhill skiing, but the artwork was really cool for that. And um, streaming, uh, was mainly done uh, from from uh, Austria, and so there was uh, was a little bit of a gathering, like hidden people. <laughs> not so much hidden, but it was not completely online, to, to put it this way. So there have been some speakers and, and parts of the team uh, gathering in Vienna to make that happen, regardless of all uh, travel restrictions and all of that. So this was a tough one, because like for everybody, it came without real notice or so. I was, uh, for the 2020 part, I was just traveling to Asia BSDCon and landed in, in Tokyo and then, oh, can go back home. <laughs> and traveling back on under full restrictions wasn't very much, very much of fun too, but uh, I can talk about that hallway side, whatever. Um, and 2022, Vienna again, like you applied for it, you pitched for the location, so we have to finally do it. Um, no one with the Vienna t-shirt. And you might have, you might have seen it like uh, on the back of 2020 crossed out, 20 <laughs> crossed out. So 2022, it finally happened with a lot of talks again, not that m uh, many attendees because uh, I think partly still some restrictions here and there depending on the country or the general uh, lack of confidence uh, to go traveling again, maybe. I mean, you can see that some people are s from employers, from, from workplaces uh, or whatever, or the, the home country. If you have been in this uh, virus territory, uh, I almost said terrorist, <laughs> terrorist, country of virus and you come back to, to your home country and then you have to go into isolation for two weeks or something like that. So it wasn't that, that much a turnout um, on attendees uh, and all that have not been coming have missing a lot in parts of having schnitzel and apfelstrudel. <laughs> <laughs> Bad you and we are not coming back for the next 28 years or something. This brings us for the current conference. So we are in Coimbra and <laughs> we are not disclosing this number yet. This is later in the day for the closing session with Henning, who will also show the country distribution map. So yet again, please do this one click survey. Uh, we are pretty good with talks and uh, pretty blasting that we are back to nine tutorials. It was even 10, uh, but one guy, Roller Angel, had a uh, bike accident and couldn't come, so that's too, sa too bad. We All the best to him for a speedy recovery. And that concludes the conferences part or conferences details.
Uh, anyone have to share one super anecdote about the previous one? We had some already. Okay. Um, so uh, coming back to the foundation, uh, the foundation is more or less like having a, a big solid outline through all the conferences uh, since uh, Poland uh, 2012. So there is a financial uh, body, a foundation, a stichting uh, under Netherlands law. So uh, we hopefully have more trust with the payments and you do not have to pay uh, whatever 300, 500, 600 uh, euros or whatever your currency at home is into some people you have never seen before and you will probably never see again, especially if they run away <laughs> with all the money. So there, there's always the foundation uh, collecting the money and then paying bills for example, um, speaker travel or um, these rooms because uh, even universities have learned that uh, doing such stuff can gain money, gain for their own, um, own pockets. In the early days, some, some stuff like this was for free, but that has changed. Uh, providing online infrastructure and experience for uh, streaming uh, stuff, so you do not have to reinvent uh, all the thingies uh, over and over again. And also we have the contacts for sponsors. So if we are going for uh, an next year conference in <laughs> wherever that is, Closing session, no, I'm not doing that. Um, so they can approach us and uh, they, they can bring, of course, uh, their local sponsors, but uh, sponsors like, uh, long-term sponsors like Apple or Arm, we have the direct contact, we just can say, hey, we are running again, and they are, oh, yeah, okay, here's the money. So run, run off and do something with it. So you do not have to explain we are this, uh, this and that guys and uh, they don't know if you are running away. So that helps a lot and um <coughs> also with long time experience uh, we can we help the, the local organizers with please avoid these mistakes, please think about this and that so they are not making beginners mistakes um, and you have a better experience besides that. Uh, Usually the local organizers are not that much experience or have no experience with organizing um, a conference. And this also goes for um, <coughs> if we have speakers or attendees that need a visa that usually includes something or requires something like a letter of invitation and all that. So uh, a, a foundation or stichting uh, has a bit more of a authority for that and not one guy writing an invitation to another, then the visa officers will go away. And the foundation also provides the Paul Schenkerwald travel grant in memories of uh, this very nice guy. Uh, we are bringing in uh, one attendee every year uh, on, our, on, the, on cost of the foundation. And if you know one who should be at a EuroBSD con, uh, conference and does not have the means to come over here, uh, especially on the money side, then talk to us and we will um, think about it. So 2024, we have been to all these countries and where you see two uh, year numbers, obviously we have been there twice. And I've been asked, oh, when can we go back to Paris <laughs> or to Netherlands? That's a pretty uh, common, common spot as well. Um, let's say most of the gray stuff in here is still potential candidates, if we call it Europe. I mean, maybe that thing, big blob over there or not, but that's, that's how uh, a rectangle works. But you can see that we have a lot of Europe over there in gray and, and all the Balkans and something with a lot of ice and snow. And even more insane beer prices. <laughs> that would be the ice stuff. <laughs>
It's legally, it's France, so no. <laughs> it's, it's the same with like uh, Jersey, that's, that's not UK, but the Queen's, uh, uh, King's uh, territories. I still count that as UK, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Caribbean, Antilles, whatever stuff, but that is legally Netherlands too, but these uh, little channel islands that, that are legally not UK, but something like Monarch, same with Gibraltar, so, but this is UK, anyway. Um, this is my last slide. I am at 40 minutes. And if you have questions, do that later on. So <laughs> please take any trash you see. Do not say it's not mine. It is yours. You just have inherited it. Thank you very much. <laughs>